Five minute randomization. The most common method of randomization is simple randomization, where each participant is randomly allocated into either group. If you have a large sample, this method works well. You end up usually with roughly even groups and even distribution of key characteristics. However, in smaller samples like you see here, you run the risk of uneven group size. So for that, we would use block randomization. In block randomization, you consider the number of groups that you have, pick a block size, calculate all permutations of allocation within that block size, and then randomly sample the blocks rather than the individual participants. Let's look at how that would work. Let's say we have two groups and 20 participants overall, and we want to balance the number of participants in the treatment and control group. Therefore, the block size must be a multiple of two. In this case, we'll choose four. If you have a block size of four and a treatment and a control group, these are all the different ways that participants could be randomly allocated into both groups evenly. So let's look at how this would work in practice. What we would do is we'd have the first four participants and we would randomly select one of these permutations. And let's say we end up with TCCT. That means treatment, control, control, treatment. So one would go to treatment, the next would go to control, the next to control, and the next to treatment. And this process would continue until every participant was allocated. And we would end up with even numbers of participants in both groups. Again, this works well for smaller samples. One limitation of this method, especially in a small sample, is that you may have imbalance in certain key characteristics like age, sex, race, and other important covariates. And so a method to counter this limitation is stratified block randomization. So this is block randomization, but we're going to perform it after putting individuals into specific strata. Now to do this, we have to know the characteristics prior to randomization. That's not always possible. And if you have too many strata and too few participants, this can be an issue as well. Let's take a look at how this would work. Here we've separated our potential participants into groups. We have male and older, male and younger, female and younger, and female and older. What we would do is within each strata perform block randomization. So we're going to do the first strata first, male and older, and we've drawn TCTC. So we go treatment, control, treatment, and control. And we would continue to do this until everyone was allocated. And what you would see here is that not only do we have equal numbers of participants in the groups, but they are balanced in terms of sex and age category. Now, if you're really worried about balance in terms of key covariates, you can use a variety of other more sophisticated techniques that I haven't shown here. One example would be match pair randomization, where you pair each participant with another participant that's very close to them in terms of key covariates, and then you randomize them to different groups. There's a variety of methods to pair the participants, but I'll just show you basically how it would look. In this, we look for the participants that are the closest match to each other, and then we randomly allocate them to each group. Okay. Now, the closest match could depend on a lot of different characteristics. It really depends on the matching technique that you select and the characteristics that you are interested in. 
and so we will continue and randomize our match pair sample. Now there are a variety of other randomization techniques to counter a variety of issues that you might encounter in experimental research. I hope that this is just an informative basic overview of some of the more common methods. Thank you for listening and I urge you to subscribe below so that I can keep continuing to produce these videos.